So as we begin here this morning, I, I want you to think just for a second, what, what was the dream of your life? What, like like when, when you were growing up, or maybe if you were coming out of adolescence and into adulthood, you, you thought to yourself, and those of you who are <clears throat> teenagers or younger and, and such, so just that maybe you're thinking now as far as like, when I grow up, I'm going to be what? What is it going to be? And here's what, I, this, is, this is group participation time, okay? So... The part that some love and others dread. But anyway, it's, uh, I want you to turn to someone next to you. Tell, tell them what it was. What was your dream growing up? Come on, everybody play. This is an all skate. All right, come on. All right, come on. Tell, tell them what did you want to be when you grew up, right? Come on. Is that, is that true? Jimmy Redman wanted to be a rock star, you know? You are our rock star, young lady. Right? Right? What did you want to be, Evelyn? A teacher. You... <laughs> Sam, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> you have no idea how well that fits my sermon today. <clears throat> what? Well, uh... What, what else? Who, who wanted to be? Come on, let, let's get a little bit of participation here. Who wanted to be? Teresa, what did you want to be when you grew up? An ice skater. Professional ice skater. Nice. Nice. Who else wants to participate? Come on. What did you want to be? Don't make me call on some of you guys. Now, come on. A what? Broadway singer. Nice. My wife wanted to be an opera singer, so something similar. Not Broadway, but uh, yeah. I, uh, I kind of, anybody else? JR, what would you, what'd you want to be? What? Football player, yeah. A sports writer. Right, yeah, I knew that about him, I knew that. I think I saw your hand, Becky. You wanted to be a masseuse. Nice. Right? <laughs> Right? I wanted to be a sports star. I wanted to be like, you know, the next great Michael Jordan or, you know, Kobe Bryant or something, basketball or baseball was a big passion of mine too. So uh, I, I wanted to be, I guess back then in the day, I kind of, I was a big Angels fan. So uh, I loved Rod Carew. And at the time when I was growing up, Reggie Jackson played for the Angels as well, even though I knew he wasn't really. That wasn't his team, but uh, anyway, so I wanted to be a big baseball star, sports star, basketball, baseball, but, but you know, here's the thing, and, and here's the kind of follow-up question with that. How'd that work out for you? <laughs> Sam, how'd that work out for you, bud? <laughs> right? In heaven one day, we're going to show up, and, and everybody's going to be recognizable, and here's Sam, six foot five, right? <laughs> Lord's going to bless you, brother. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, you know, the, the thing that uh, I, I want to talk about today, and I guess, you know, in the real world, right, we're having kind of fun with this, the dreams that we have in our life, the, the dreams that, like, I want to be, and, and maybe even for some, if we kind of begin to kind of creep into the real world today, you know, it's like, okay, let, that's kind of fun to think about when I grow up, I want to be, but, but the reality of, of the world I live in uh, is and maybe I went to college for this or that or I did, and, and I wanted to be then. So in my heart of hearts, this is what I thought I would do, and for m perhaps most of us, maybe many of us, that it would be, you know, it, it's kind of turned out different than that. And, and with that, there's been disappointments in life. And so our, our lives are kind of wrought with this kind of dealing with disappointment. I'm just disappointed things didn't turn out the way I hoped it would. And I kind of ask myself the question in a spiritual sense is where, where is God in the midst of those kind of disappointments? And is that why I don't experience peace in my life. Maybe, I, maybe there's this, because of this level of disappointment, there's like, you know, I never thought of it about the fact that perhaps that's some reasons why maybe I don't experience peace. 
Well, let's, let's look to our text. We're going to continue to unpack that. Matthew chapter 1. You said, that looks a lot similar to what we did last week. It is, because it's the exact text. But <clears throat> we're going to look at a different perspective at it. We're going to look at it from some different angles, and, and I think it'll be helpful. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord, he said, consider what? Remember, I talked about this last week. Mary revealed to Joseph that she's pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph was considering, you know, divorcing her, or, or not divorcing, they're not married. I said that last week, made that same mistake last week. But uh, consider breaking off the engagement uh, quietly, just to, to not bring dishonor to her, whatever. So, so that's what he's considering. So, so as Joseph considers that, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet, right? We read that last week as well, it's out of Isaiah 7, right? This is the prophetic word from Isaiah that says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. And she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This is the word of the Lord for us today. And we say, thanks be to God. So, so, so this message of Emmanuel, and by the way, the Jewish people knew that pro prophet, knew that prophetic, that prophecy really well. They knew what the, the anticipation of the coming of the Messiah and last week, of course, I talked about waiting, right? And so that was the theme last week, uh, that we're waiting and waiting. And how do we have peace when we're waiting, right? And this week, I'm talking about disappointment. Disappointment. What, what, how do I have peace when I'm disappointed? How do we discover peace when I have this kind of seemingly almost bubbling to the surface every once in a while, this just disappointment? I'm just disappointed how things have turned out. Think of the story of Mary and Joseph. <clears throat> now, if, if anybody has some reasons to be disappointed, I would think Mary and Joseph had some of those reasons, right? So, so they, this potential broken engagement, I, I would imagine Joseph kind of in his moments alone, quiet moments, was, was thinking about the fact of saying, well, that's not how I have had planned things out, <laughs> And, and perhaps there's just that disappointment that it's not the way I thought it would be, right? We know that to be some, some truth to that because he was quietly going to break off the engagement until the angel of the Lord showed up on the scene and told him, this is the truth. This is what's happening. Don't be afraid to take Mary. So he was already considering this deep depth of, of disappointment. In, in that culture, it was... It was extremely, I mean, it's, it's not really thought of well here. Mike, I'm getting some sort of feedback of some. I don't know if they're hearing it or if it's just me, but I hear kind of a little bit of a ring here. So sorry about that. I didn't want that to. <clears throat> but so, so there's that, dis, that disappointment that Joseph was feeling for sure. Then we begin to think, once the angel said to uh, uh, said this to, to Joseph, he kind of got on board and they kind of made plans. And then, of course... Caesar Augustus decides to put this, uh, uh, you know, decree that they had to go to their place of, of their, their home place of, of where they were from and, and kind of get signed up for this census. And this census was, was done so that they can know who's all there. It was just this idea so they can tax the people. And so they had to go to Bethlehem, and they were in Nazareth, and it was about 80 miles from, if you just kind of draw a line from Nazareth to Bethlehem, but if you do it by the road they had to travel, it was 120 miles they had to go to Bethlehem. And, and you know, they, they couldn't Uber, uh, there was no train, they had to ride on a donkey and everybody knows that uh, donkey rides are not exactly you know full cushioned and and so that's a long ride I tried to think what's about 120 miles uh, you know 80 miles what does that give does that even get us to Irvine up I-5 maybe 80 miles 120 miles does that get us to downtown LA is that about where we're talking about so from here to downtown Los Angeles is the distance that they had to travel 
walking and riding an animal. And not just that, they, of course, Mary was pregnant, so it, it was no, like, day trip. And so she was cl getting close to the baby coming, so whether it was, like, eighth month that they started, seventh, eighth month, I don't know how many days it took, maybe at the end of their eighth month, maybe the beginning of her ninth month of pregnancy. It, but the point is that she was very pregnant. Maybe they're thinking, this is so disappointing that we have to do, I mean, we can't even give birth here at home in our home where our own stuff is and it's comfortable, it's not, and, and disappointment. And of course, just the whole idea, maybe they're like, well, maybe it's good that we're getting out of town because we're not, haven't had our wedding yet. And people are like, have you noticed something different about Mary? <laughs> All the people are saying I don't know what it is, but uh, there's something about that's changing about her. So that sense of disappointment, they had to kind of deal with that. Of course, when they arrive in Bethlehem, uh, Mary turns to Joseph. She said, you did go online and get us a place, right? Uh, I thought you were doing that. No, I thought you were doing No, you were doing that. So they went on Hotels.com really quick. And there was absolutely no space available. Nothing. Maybe there was a space available in the high-end place, but they couldn't afford it. I don't know. Whatever the case was, we know that there was no room in the inn. And so you can't tell me there wasn't that sense of, well, this is disappointing. <laughs> right? You, are you with me on this? So if, if anybody has a sense of, of disappointment, Perhaps it was Mary and Joseph. Oh, they gave birth to a son. They named him Jesus. The shepherds came. The wise men came. But I'm sure Mary was feeling this sense of, you know what? I, this has been amazing, uh, incredible how God has fulfilled his promises. I'll talk more about that in a second. But they thought, Mary thought to herself, I just can't wait to get back home. Does anybody know what happens next? All of a sudden, uh, they decided that they were going to, uh, out of fear for taking over, I shared this story a couple weeks ago, out of fear for uh, the idea of, of uh, a, a son that's going to be a king, the king of Israel, you know, the word was spread, so, the, so as the wise men came and left, uh, Keith told that story so well a few weeks ago, you know, about the, the, the craziness of this, of this king. Right? And so, as a result of that, the Lord told Joseph and Mary to go to Egypt. Mary's like, seriously, Joe? <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously? And so there's, I, I just can't help but think that there's a sense of, this is not how I had planned it. This is not how I thought it would come, it turn out. I mean, after all, <clears throat> this is not always the healthiest thing to do, but sometimes I look back in these stories and I think, what could have happened? Like, what, what were some possibilities? You know, Joseph could have just left Mary and said, nope, I'm out. Joseph could have made Mary's pregnancy a public disgrace and then kind of put it on the court of public opinion. Maybe he would tweet about it or put it on social media. Maybe they could have gone somewhere else other than Bethlehem. Say, you know what? I know we've been told to go down to this decree, but I'm very pregnant. I ain't going. Maybe the shepherds would have not come. They're like, you know what? We're kind of a disgrace in this community. You know how they treat us? And so I don't even want to go into that town. I, I don't, I mean. Maybe the wise men said, that is a cool star. But. We're not going to follow that. I mean, we're gonna, I mean, that seems silly. Maybe Mary and Joseph said, we ain't going to, to Egypt. She just had a baby. And yet none of that happened, right? So you can play that game all you want, but it, it didn't happen. So it kind of then kind of brings me back to the idea. So I wonder if, it, if they did at all, if, as they did all of this, rather, 
if they had just moments of disappointment. I mean, just come with me on this, but fast forward 33 years. There's Mary seeing her son hanging on a cross, suffering and dying. And I wonder if that thought, like, I, I, that's not how I plan things. Moms, right? What do you think for your child? Now, maybe it's just too difficult for you to place yourself in Mary's shoes. And, or someone else's for that matter. Maybe it's just too difficult. We just kind of are in our own bubble in our own world. And, and again, last week I talked about waiting uh, and, and, and so today, as I said, I'm talking about disappointment and how to have peace in the midst of disappointment that we, we face. Um, disappointment that has kind of crept under the, our skin a little bit, right? And again, there might be some similarities to last week in some of this, but frankly, really, we're talking about a whole different category. Maybe you, you've thought, you know what, I, I thought I'd be married by now or dating someone by now, and I don't have really any prospect, and the prospects that are out there are not very good. And so I'm just disappointed. I, I never thought I would be divorced. I, n- I never thought that. and I'm just disappointed. I never thought that I would be dealing with health issues. I, I just, I thought I'd be healthier, and now I'm, and so I'm just, maybe you've like, you know what, I, I never thought we would lose a child in childbirth, or not able to have one. This isn't what I wanted. This wasn't the plan. God, I just don't understand. I don't understand. This wasn't the plan, so I have this disappointment. I thought things would be different than than they actually have turned out. Maybe it didn't start as a disappointment in God, because I can say to you, well, maybe we're disappointed in God. And for some, maybe that's true. You're like, I am. I'm mad at him. And maybe others are like, you know what, I'm not mad at God, but I just carry this disappointment. But what ends up happening is is at times that kind of begins to creep in, that disappointment. If not dealt with, if not dealt with in a healthy, godly, biblical way, that disappointment has a tendency to creep into other areas of our lives as well as our spiritual life. It creeps into our relationships, it creeps into how we talk, how we act. And that disappointment kind of oozes out of us, right? I've told you before, it's like, it's like life is like a tube of toothpaste. And whenever you're squeezed, whatever's on the inside always comes out. And when that inside is carried with disappointment, and it didn't start with being disappointed with God, but then I, all of a sudden I find my spiritual life not alive. It lacks passion and power and I'm not bearing any spiritual fruit, perhaps that disappointment is affecting my spiritual life. And so in effect, in fact, maybe I am kind of disappointed in God. But I just don't understand what God's plan is for me. I don't quite understand that. Do you relate with that? Here's, Here's what I've discovered. Disappointment is typically discovered when you have unmet expectations. When expectations aren't met, when I, when I set expectations and they are not met, it tends to bring with it disappointment. Seemingly equally is that joy then is discovered when we have trust in a spiritual sense, trust that God is working all things for our good. So I think there are some principles, some, some ideas that we, ha- we can discover through this story of Mary and Joseph that will help us kind of be a guide to us, if you will. A guide to, to begin to learn to let go of disappointment. It's not easy. It's not easy. When we carry with us those unmet expectations and, and, and begin to... To, to let that go, it seems to, because it crawls under our skin, it kind of becomes a part of us. And so when we let go of those disappointments, it's almost like we're letting go a part of our persona, like a part of who we are. But isn't that what God is desiring for each and every one of us? 
to be transformed more into his image. Less of me, more of him. So perhaps that disappointment, that letting go of that disappointment, and that changing who we are is the exact thing you need. And so do I. So let's just look at these kind of a, what I'm kind of saying is a guide to letting go of disappointment. And I hope this ends up being a real word of encouragement for every one of us here today. Because I just don't think I know of one person who doesn't have some level of some disappointment of things that didn't turn out the way they turn out. Now, I'm not suggesting that everybody's carrying around bitterness and and heart because that disappointment can really dig in deep. And for some, boy, it just... It just kind of poisons every part of your life. And I certainly am not suggesting that. But I think for every person, there's a level of, yeah, that I do kind of have some disappointment. So I think it's an ongoing thing. And sometimes things creep up, things happen in life that you weren't anticipating, and all of a sudden something new. And so so it's just good principles for us, I think, to live by. The first thing is this. If you have your sermon notes, you could follow along on the app that has these sermon notes on there. So you can follow along with that. But here's the first thing is be surrendered to God's plan no matter what, right? <clears throat> this is kind of the, the, the number one thing of said. Listen, it, it calls us to be surrendered to his plan for our lives. Mary and Joseph were determined to follow God's plan. If we learn anything from Mary and Joseph, we learn that their, their stick-to-itiveness, right, their determination, to say we're going to follow God's plan. We're going to follow where he leads us. As a result, we don't read about disappointment from Mary and Joseph. I imply, I think there's some implied kind of aspects of humanity that, that's like how does he not or he, she not have some level of like, I didn't expect that, I don't have. So there's some implication of that, but we don't have a chapter in here talking about Mary or Joseph wrestling with the idea of, of this major disappointment of how this didn't work out and that didn't work out. And I think as a result that we can, we can understand that Mary and Joseph were like surrendered to his plan. They expected God to fulfill his promise. They expected him to fulfill his promise. I think a tendency to have major disappointment in our life There's an indicator for us, if we carry that major disappointment for us, of a lack of surrender, right? Because then I just, I continue with that unmet expectation rather than from a spiritual sense surrendering that and saying, God, I'm going to expect your plan. And as a result of all of that, it's hard for us to experience peace. And And I don't have this kind of internal, like, I can rest. Knowing that he's got a plan. In fact, we understand that God indeed has a purpose for all things. So so our charge is to surrender or accept ahead of time that, that God has a purpose. Mike, maybe it's just for me, but would you just turn the fan on and the heat off? Right? It feels to me like it's about 95 degrees in here. So... I want you to see this scripture. Look at this. Proverbs 19, 21. You can make plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Right? You can make all the plans you want. But in the end, God's purpose will prevail. God has a purpose for us. And when we surrender to him, when we surrender to God, Right? What we are saying is, God, I want to follow your purpose. I want to accept the fact that you have a purpose in all of this. But it takes first surrender. In fact, I want to say to you, all three of these next three things I'm going to share with you don't work unless we surrender. They don't bring the fulfillment and the completeness unless we find first to surrender. So that is key for every one of us. For someone here today, perhaps the very thing you needed to hear today is just this truth that I need to surrender to his purpose and plan. He has a purpose. 
When we do, we kind of get to this second one, and that is that we learn what God is teaching me or teaching us, right? Learn what God is teaching me. And again, this is so difficult when you are disappointed, mainly because it's hard to see the forest from the trees, right? It's hard to see when you're right up against the disappointment. It's hard to see perhaps God is trying to teach me something. Think of it this way. When I'm a, I, I, as, a, as a child, I, I would, uh, my parents would say to me, and I'm just making this illustration up, but just imagine this to be true, that, that the parent, my parents would say, Dave, uh, we are planning on Saturday to go to the park and go play on the swing sets. And as a child, I was like, Woo, what? I'm going to the, oh, yeah, I'm so excited about going to the park and get a play. It's a huge swing set near my house and that is actually true when I was growing up but it's this huge swing set and so we'd go down the street and it was at Gun Park right they actually changed the name because of all the stuff anyway so but it actually was called Gun Park you say why because it was on Gun Avenue but anyway that's that's neither here nor there but it's Gun Park and they had this huge swing set and I love playing on that Right, and so, so they said, we're going to go to the park, we're going to play, it's going to be, oh, I'm so looking forward to that. Come Saturday morning, we get kind of, wake, wake up kind of early, and they say, Dave, listen, we uh, are not going to go to the park. And at that point, I was disappointed. Why was I disappointed? Because I had expectations that we were going to go to the park. And so my expectations weren't met, and as a result of that, I, carried, I was mad. And as a child, not only was I mad, but I started kicking and screaming and even kind of got on the floor and kind of kicked my feet and was like, nah, I started to throw a fit. And I was mad and I was started to cry and, and it's, like, it's like, it's the park, right? But as a child, I just, these unmet expectations and they're like, Dave, but, but Dave, and I wouldn't hear another word they said. I stomp out of the room. No, I'm not going to, we can't go to the park. You promised I was going to the park, but, but Dave, hold on, I, there, and they were trying to tell me more, but I wouldn't have anything of it. Why? Because I was disappointed. And finally, I calmed down enough and said, now, would you, would you listen to us a little more? And, was, you know, at that point, I was crying so hard, you know, that it was like, it's not just the, <clears throat> you know, the cry. Have you ever cried like this? I did kind of more times than I want to admit when I was younger. But the kind of crying that you can't catch your breath, you're all, <laughs> you know, those kind of crying. Have you ever cried like that? <clears throat> By that time, I was crying like that, you know, just, can't, can't, you know, talk. And, and I was crying, and, and uh, <clears throat> they said, the reason why we can't go to the park is because we're going to go to Disneyland today. <laughs> why, why, why didn't you tell me, you know? <laughs> I was trying to. God has a purpose that is even greater than Disneyland. And sometimes we're so busy being upset and disappointed, we can't see past that disappointment to the fact that God perhaps wants to teach you something. Maybe it's to forgive. Maybe it's, and that forgiveness, all of a sudden as you forgave that person, it gave you a sense of freedom that you never thought you would have. Maybe he's he's teaching you to trust him. And because of that trust, you have this, now you've been growing in this spiritual maturity and it brought so much fruit in your life. And and you realize, holy cow, I should have done that in the beginning. But I couldn't because I was so into my disappointment that I couldn't see past it. You see, how do I get past that? Surrender. Let go. God, I want to trust you with this. Can you help me to see what you're trying to teach me? Right? The second thing I want us to look at, I think, is this guide to letting go. Or actually, it's the third thing, but it's to anticipate what plan he has in store. To begin to anticipate it. So as we grow in this, this maturity spiritually, as we begin to understand what it means to fulfill and follow his purpose for our life, we begin to recognize that, you know what, maybe he has a plan. If this doesn't work out, maybe he does have a plan. Over and over again in the Advent story, we, we hear and read about miraculous events that fulfilled prophecy, that brought favor to Mary and Joseph to, that, to confirm everything God had promised. 
And again, that, that took place in, in great reasons because Mary and Joseph surrendered to that plan. But as that plan was fulfilled, they were just in amazement in all that God was doing. It's almost as if, I, I have it on my cell phone, but it's almost as if they're like ready with their phone, ready to video at any, other, any time. Oh, just look and see what God's going to do. But yet again, that's another situation where it's hard to see the forest from the trees, right? We're, we're disappointed about the swing set. And God says, oh, I got something for you. There's a plan. And we begin to anticipate that as, as mature believers in Christ, we can begin to look at disappointments or things not working out as, we, as maybe we thought they would work out and begin to say, you know what? God's got a plan. God's got a plan. Let's, let's just wait and see. And something changes in us. Our attitude begins to change when we do that, right? Our, our, how we talk to others, how we deal with disappointment, or how we deal with plans changing. Maybe, maybe you've worked so hard at something, and, and all of a sudden it turned out differently, and you're like, you know, maybe there's a plan for this. And people are like, wow, you're handling that well. You're like, yeah, because I know that God has a purpose. And I can trust him. And as a result, I don't carry with me those unmet expectations and disappointments. One last thing I want to draw our attention to is always be available for God to use this, whatever this is, that, that unmet expectation that could lead to disappointment, that be available to use this and me, you, to impact others. That perhaps the, the, the thing that went off course was purposely God's going to use that, right? Not, not that God maybe caused it to go off course. Maybe it was something bad. Maybe something that's a loss, right? The things that we talked about that were like difficult, difficult things that we carry in our lives. And perhaps God wants to use that. I told you last week about, you know, Cheryl and I's health. And thank you for praying for Cheryl. She's home. I think she's watching the service now. I love you, babe. Good morning to you. Uh, <clears throat> but she's just been dealing with some terrible pain in her back and and so continue to pray for her. We had an MRI last week, or she had an MRI. We didn't. It's like, let's do an MRI together, babe. <laughs> but she, she had an MRI, and, and so we're hoping to see, hear some results this week from that. And so just keep praying for her. But as we, as we deal with that, right, we think, and, and not only just the recent things that she's dealt with, but, but some of the health stuff over the last 20 years, I told you last week. I share that not to make, oh, look, how so, you know, not to feel sorry, but just to recognize that, like, like, we relate to where our lives are at, right? We carry some things that are like, yeah, that's not how we plan things out. And I have to admit, that came with, with some disappointment. And I'd love to say, oh, these principles, I got these down. Nailing them, knocking them out of the park. No, these are things that I'm like, I have to focus on and work on. But here's the interesting thing. <clears throat> Over these last 20 plus years now of dealing with chemical imbalance and health issues, the amount of people that have come to Cheryl and I and say, you know what, and some of you are in this room right now, like, you know, the, what you're walking through, I, I've walked through, and just hearing how your faith is sustained, and, and the thing I've been so proud of my wife is that she's kept her eyes on Christ, and she's continued to, to, to move forward, and I've been so proud of her for that, and, and our whole family, the kids and I, were just so grateful for her willingness to keep her eyes on Christ. And it has not been easy, my friends. But she has. And the impact that that has made on people's lives is countless. I've just been so amazed. You think, why are you amazed? I, I still am amazed at how God has used that, like that, God, the thing that like probably is the greatest kind of area of disappointment in our lives the greatest area of unmet expectation the greatest area of, of like oh you know what i'm talking about i don't even have a word for it Ugh. if i used word for it i probably you'd probably be like he shouldn't be preaching you know what i mean so <clears throat> but yet god's used that to impact other people's lives and i've been like really 
And so we've kind of gone with that. And we're like, Lord, we just want to be available to you. We're going to trust that you have a plan. We don't know what that is. But God, we're going to trust you with that. And as a result, right, we anticipate what God has in store. We're learning that God has something to teach us through that just like he has something to teach you. And we recognize the fact that he wants to use us, and even in our brokenness, perhaps especially because of our brokenness, to impact other people. And that's what he's called us to. I want us to look really quickly as we kind of wrap this up. In fact, Darren, come on up, would you? I don't know where you're at, brother. Yeah, come on up. Um, I I want us to look really quickly back to our text in Matthew chapter 1. Look back at this. As he considered this, Joseph, an angel appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for your child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you were to name him Jesus. And let's say all this. Can we say this line that's underlined out loud? Can you say it with me, right? For he will save his people from their sins. You didn't say that loud enough. Here we go. Let's do it again. Here we go. For he will save his people from their sins. What is the purpose of all of this? That Jesus would come to save his people from all their sins. There is a purpose that God has for you, for me, in the midst of your disappointment. And this Christmas story, the story of the birth of Christ. A story that perhaps no one would have planned out. No one would have been like, well this is a good idea. You know, let's write this story. Like, I would have thought of 10 different things to do other than what they had to do. Yet God had a purpose. And Mary and Joseph discovered they were a part of that purpose. And they're like, we're going to trust him. We're going to surrender to that plan. And when they surrendered to his ways, as a result, they were changed forever. And so was all mankind. It impacted so many others, right? It's impacted you as a result of their obedience. I don't think there's anybody here that can honestly say that their life turned out exactly how they planned it. (laughs) Maybe in some ways here and there for sure. And as a result, it could be potential And maybe it's greater for others, a little bit less for for others, but but has the potential to carry with it disappointment. I just didn't expect that. I didn't know that was going to happen. Can I encourage you to surrender that disappointment to him? Just say, God, I I have to let this go. I have to kind of turn my hands. I'm going to have us practice that here in just a second. I'm just going to practice just letting go and allowing you to to teach me and open my eyes to what you are teaching me. Open my eyes to the fact that you have a plan that I can just be anticipating and that in fact you want to use me to impact, use my story, use my brokenness and disappointment to impact others. Yeah, even that. Stand with me, would you? Everybody, put their hands just like this, if you would. <clears throat> just like that. You can do it, every one of us. What is it that you carry? What perhaps of your past or present <clears throat> that could lead to disappointment do you hold on to? I didn't expect it to be like this. And I, we can talk about all the things you can learn and be like, oh yeah, learn, learn a lesson. Thanks, thanks, Pastor. You know. But are you truly ready to have peace? If you are. And I want to encourage all of us to do this just as a, as a practice of this because I think it's so, so uh, just visually and physically, it just is a good model for us. Would you just right now, would you just turn your hands just like that? Say, God, I give it to you. I give you my disappointment, my past, my hurts, 
the things that I thought would work out this way didn't work out and things that I've had to face I didn't want to I didn't want to be in this position Lord I didn't want to just I wanted to go to the swing set God says I got something for you I got a purpose so Lord okay I surrender I surrender Lord Jesus thank you for this day thank you that you have come as we celebrate you in the nativity and light the Christ candle it's a reminder for us that you indeed are here and not only are you here but you have a deep purpose for each and every one of our lives you have a deep plan and a purpose for for where we're going and who we are as a church as a as a married couple as a single person as as a as just as a young adult as a teenager as a senior adult whose life has been changing and and all of the things that we face in our world god you have a plan for all this we can't always see it but lord we want to surrender to you and just be able to say god take this disappointment take this this confusion and just god we want to begin to see and have eyes to see and ears to hear your plan your purpose what do you have to teach us what's next how do you want to use my life to impact others so thank you lord for what you're going to do we trust you we want to give our lives to you what a wonderful step it is today to surrender to you in your name I pray amen amen Amen. God bless you as you go today if you want to pray I'd love to pray with you come on forward I'd love to pray with you right down front would you just tell about five six people that you love them and Merry Christmas to them I hope you have a wonderful week I hope you come Friday night if you're able to come to our Christmas Eve service at Mission Church it'll be a great time together and then I'll see you again next Sunday morning Go in the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ.